everybody. Today we are here with Chris LeBeau, and he's got a business called Decoding Cocktails, which of course I had to know more about. So Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. You bet, Elaine. Happy to, happy to talk about things. So how did you get started in this business? So it is actually a pretty long journey. Um, so I, I worked for 16, 17 years in strategic planning in the healthcare and finance worlds. And uh, But it was in 2009 that my city of St. Louis got what at least someone considered the, the first real cocktail bar of like this generation of this, you know, this go round. And I went and it was kind of just like, hey, this would be fun. And I, I very quickly became entranced by what was going on there. Um, and so uh, in 2010, my girlfriend at the time got me a private lesson with one of our kind of rising mixologists. He's like, hey, here's a book I recommend. He taught me a few things. And really for the next five or six years, a little bit happened, but not that much happened. And in 2016 or so, uh, I met one of my very good friends and mentors and a very boutique liquor store opened here in St. Louis. And my, so my friend and my mentor began to say like, hey, try this drink, go buy this book. And then I could go to the liquor store, this liquor store called Intoxicology. And it's the opposite of uh, Total Wine. Um, it's, you know, it's uh, 5% of that inventory, but uh, they only put on the shelves what they like and understand and know. And so in toxicology was also a place I could go to, I, as I like to say, with problems. And so I started experimenting more and more. And my friends, of course, reciprocated by being like, can you make more and more stuff for me? And <laughs> then, uh, and, you know, jump in anytime you have a question. But so I like to think that two things happened. There is a cocktail book that I do not recommend for the home bartender, but it came out, it's called the Cocktail Codex. And it makes an argument that there is only six cocktails in the world. And I remember thinking, I was like, well, both for me and for anybody, if suddenly you didn't look at every cocktail as an, a, an iterative one-off, but as belonging to a family, now suddenly the universe of creating this becomes a lot more like cooking. And the second book, coincidentally, is actually a book called The 4-Hour Chef by uh, author Tim Ferriss. And uh, it's a cookbook that he says is also how to learn any skill. And he says at the start of learning any skill, and in this particular case, it is cooking, he's like, you need to identify what are all the points of failure. So you don't know how to use a knife. Uh, you don't have the right equipment. I hand you a 97-ingredient recipe. I hand you a super finicky recipe. These are all the things that are going to make sure that you quit rather than keep going. And so I took what is in a lot of cocktail books. I threw out the 91% of it that the beginning bartender does not need to know because as you know, in the cookbook world, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners are very capable, but we all know there are cookbooks out there that profess to be written for beginners that are not for beginners. Um, and that exists in the cocktail world. And so basically... I built a little program designed to teach my friends how to make drinks right before the pandemic, four or five months beforehand. And when the pandemic came, I was like, well, that's the end of that. And it was the opposite of that. <laughs> For several months, nothing happened. Although very early on, somebody was like, hey, have you thought about teaching this virtually? And I was like, nobody wants to learn cocktails on the internet. And I was wrong. Um, and so I got a couple of one-off requests, but I'll never forget it was August or September of 2020. Uh, a notable law firm reached out to me being like, hey, we're trying to do a client event. Could you teach us how to make cocktails? And I'm just like, you know, I'm just a guy who lives in South City, St. Louis, right? Like, and it went very well. They started ref referring me to other people. And by December of 2020, I did like 15 or 16 virtual classes. And so come the spring of 21, I was like, well, I really like doing this. I was like, maybe I should just do this full time now. And so for almost two and a half years now, uh, I've considered myself full time as a bartender. So as opposed to becoming one at the age of 21, I became one full time at the age of 38. And now I'm 40. Very good. Well, I told you one of the things I loved about the opportunity to talk to you was that you were right at that intersection between the two things that I love to do, which is the marketing and the cookbook publishing. Sure. So I love that you have simplified this and, and found a way to make that accessible. So when you go into an event, 
Um, how are people using this? Is this team building? Is it just entertaining? Is it a party? Uh, how are people working with you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is often in a team building or a, it's my birthday kind of environment. But my thought is that probably 80% of the time, people think this is going to be really fun. Uh, well, 100% of the time, hopefully people think it's going to be fun. But 80% of the time, people are like, hey, let's do this. It'll be fun. And nine plus times out of 10, we're 10 or 15 minutes into things. And I think people start looking around being like, I think, I think I'm actually going to learn how to do this. Because like with cooking, right? You don't start with something super complex you work on. Like I, I always like to say in the cocktail world, uh, one of the analogies, that, sorry, in the culinary world, if you want to test a chef's muster, a lot of people will say, can you make an omelet? right? It's like, you know, there's simple, nowhere to hide. The question is, do you understand heating technique? Do you understand, you know, all these different things? And in the cocktail world, that's the daiquiri for a lot of people. And it's a three ingredient cocktail. And to realize that if you begin to see cocktails in terms of ratios and basic technique, that suddenly it's like, well, if the gin gimlet, the daiquiri, and the whiskey sour and the lemon drop were all the same drink with just different ingredients, basically the same ratio, well, if I can make one of these, then I can actually make 12 drinks like this. And so I think the minute you collapse the drink universe on, in on itself, um, people begin to suddenly realize, I think I could actually learn something here. And so anyway, so that that my answer is it's often for a special event, but oftentimes people end up learning a lot more than they thought they were going to. What do you think surprises them the most? I think that people just, um, you know, I always use the analogy of tacos. So for, you know, it's like, if you know how to make beef tacos, then chicken tacos, you're like, oh, okay, got it. So just, so I think what surprises them and they're just like, they see every drink, you know, they don't, they see a margarita and they see a Pegu club Nobody knows what a Pegu Club is. Let me let me do a different example. You see a daiquiri and you see a gimlet and you just see two drinks and maybe you like them both, but you don't see that they are related. And so what surprises people is that uh, that you don't have – what the challenge the cocktail has, and there's analogies to this in the cooking world, is you can open a bottle of wine or a beer or a soda, whatever you want, and pour it and you're done. A cocktail is this assembly of ingredients with some level of technique. And when you you when you think of them as all these iterative one-offs, you got to get out the recipe book and like, okay, what do I want to make today? And I'm like, if you are thinking about this in terms of recipe books, you're only going to have a cocktail on that special occasion. And if you make rudimentary basic drinks that can be phenomenal, just like the best cooking, good ingredients, simple technique, stop there. When people begin to realize that all you need is citrus, some simple syrup, and your favorite spirit, and you have a cocktail, as opposed to like, but the recipe says, it's like when you're really cooking, the people who follow your work, you know, it's like, Here's, you know, it's like, I come to your house, we're going to have barbecue. You come to my house, we're going to have barbecue. They're both barbecue, but we both use different recipes, but it's still, you know, ribs or whatever. So I think people, sorry, this is where I get, get animated here. But I think the big thing is that surprises people is that this is supposed to be harder than it is. And cooking can be very, very difficult and very delicate, but if you get some basic sturdy recipes, some of them can be very hard to mess up and be pretty darn good. So, yeah. So do you have a personal favorite? Uh, you know, the answer is cocktails are a lot like, I imagine for a lot of chefs out there, like I'll never turn down like a bitter cocktail, like a Negroni or something like that, but it's so of the moment. Um, it's so situational, you know, is it, is it 4 PM in the afternoon on a spring day? Is it 11 PM on a cold wintry night? And you hand me a great cocktail. I'm probably going to drink it no matter what. Um, hopefully not all the time. Um, <laughs> but 
it is this thing where it's like, to me, it's so mood driven. And I think about that as my relationship with food. Um, I often, when people ask me for a restaurant recommendation, I'm like, what do you, what vibe are you looking for? And that's, doesn't have to be everybody, but that's me. Um, or just, is there a spirit or some kind of flavor that's calling to me? And so it is where it's very mood driven. And of course, I would imagine for a lot of your people too, um, if there's an ingredient I've recently been messing around with a lot, I just frankly want to play with it more. So, um, so that's, that, that's my, that's my non-answer to your question. <laughs> How about this? Where would you tell people to start if they want to start exploring more with different drinks? Yes. So um, use promo code Chris for 0% off this book. Um, but uh, this book is called The Book of Cocktail Ratios. It is by food author Michael Ruhlman, who's done a lot of uh, writing for like the French Laundry, um, Chef um, Thomas Keller and whatnot. But he just put this book out. This is what the cocktail codex that I mentioned earlier is not. This book, the Cocktail Codex is written by bartenders for bartenders. This is written by a professional author for home bartenders. It just came out like a month ago or six weeks ago, but he breaks cocktails down into families. Do Michael and I see eye to eye on everything? He likes his cocktails a little boozier than I do. But again, to a chef audience, uh, and if you guys are still coming up on to cocktails, what you need to know is simple syrup, sh sugar, and dilution are two of the big weapons against booziness. So if you come across a cocktail that is too, if you're tasting too much heat, uh, oftentimes a little extra sugar, oftentimes a little extra. So to the cooking reference, simple syrup or sugar in our world is the equivalent of fat in the cooking world. And so if you feel like, I don't like sweet drinks. Yes, we, many of us still have a hangover from like bad drinks from, you know, what you can still get today or from years ago. And yes, I guess I don't necessarily like sweet drinks either, but we have such an aversion to sugar, you know, and maybe you can encounter this in your world, but if you begin to pull sugar out of a cocktail, it's going to become harsher. And so what's important for people to think about is, uh, so anyways, this book teaches the interrelationship of cocktails, but does not require you. Um, and I'm happy to send a link if you have any trouble finding it. Um, but this book is not going to require you to run to the liquor store every time you want to make a new drink. He talks about what are some very strategic, more slightly more esoteric bottles that you should maybe put on your shelf, but it's not going to be, okay, now you need Velvet Falernum, and now you need to go buy this, and I need to go buy that. A lot of it is going to be about working out these basic interrelationships. Um, people want to geek out even more because technique is very, very important in the cooking world. Uh, this book is called The Bar Book. It is by a wonderful bartender out of Portland, Oregon called Jeffrey Morgenthaler. This is the best book on technique, period, in my opinion. Um, and it's very accessible. I love Jeff's approach. So uh, if you're only going to buy one, I probably recommend the book of cocktail ratios. Um, but The Bar Book, if you want to become a better bartender, if you home bartender, if you, like, you want to become a better chef, understanding technique is just critical. And Jeff does the best uh, explaining of that, in my opinion. So that is awesome. Thank you. We'll have to get you your own book sometime soon. That's you know, I, I was asked to buy Michael because he's written like a bunch of books and I just, I haven't, I haven't, I, I have an idea, but I, my concern is, is I don't, you know, here, I don't know if this is the therapist chair or not. <laughs> uh, I like to hope that my ego is not so big, it's still there, that I have to see a book with my name on it to feel cool. And so to me, it's like, if I'm going to write something, why would I do it? And so I'll put this out there for the person that wants to steal it. There's a, uh, a, a wonderful cooking book, so to speak. It's called Brunch is Hell, Save the World by Throwing a Dinner Party. And it's a, basically a manifesto on why you need to throw dinner parties all the time. So I throw dinner parties once a month now. And it has a very irreverent approach of like, because it's ultimately about like, if you invite people into your house and you serve them food that is just okay, but they have a great time, they're not going to care. And so it's like, let's take all the pressure off of like, well, what if it's not perfect? They're not going to care. They're like, have good music. Don't forget to clean your bathroom. And don't do anything too complicated. And to me, I think the most important part about 
the drink at the end of the day. The advantage that a cocktail has over wine and beer is that you get to say to someone, come over, let me make something for you. And as opposed to, hey, this vintner made something, let me pour something out for you. Still very nice. But the act, the art of making a drink for someone is, is something that beer and wine can't, can't own because they're not cocktails. But the cocktail's dis- disadvantage is you have to make it. You can't just, <laughs> you know, so. Well, I have something to aspire to now, so. Good, 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 I'll good. Give, I'll give that a whirl. You know, it, it is easy to get discouraged with drinks because a friend of mine sent me what I have no doubt is one of the best rum punch recipes. And you'd think it would be punch and rum. And it wasn't. It was about nine different things. And you're right. I went to the liquor store and went, I, I, I can't even deal, you know, and yep. I gave up and walked away. Yeah. And so I think that's it is, you know, if you're throwing a party at your house, uh, first thing is, you know, look at a book like Cocktail Ratios. But yeah, like looking on the internet or in cocktail books, like most people are trying to look cool, in my opinion, you know. And so if you're on the internet and you see someone who's really neat and they have an eight ingredient recipe, you should exit that page immediately and go find something else. Um, Because Making a cocktail and it feeling hard or expensive or then it not even going right, that is an absolute perfect recipe to make sure you make fewer cocktails. Absolutely. Um, and so you don't start, you know, I'm failing the reference, but when you're when you're starting cooking, you start with something, again, simple. Um, and so, yeah, I think that complex recipes are the death of cocktails for a lot of people and why they relegate them to to bartenders to do for them. Yeah, I think you're right. I love this. I really appreciate you talking to me today. Tell me how people can find you if they want to follow you or pop in on one of your virtuals or host a virtual or an in-person. Sure, 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 sure. Um, So yeah, uh, decodingcocktails.com. That's the same for on the social media channels as well. Uh, You're welcome to follow Got a little, just like you've got my own little podcast channel uh, coming up soon. Will be a conversation about the Japanese spirit shochu. Ninety nine percent of it's consumed in Japan, and so most people aren't aware of what it is. Um, but the Japanese, of course, bring their excellence in all things to it. Um, and yeah, my most recent virtual class that I did, a uh, free virtual class I did, was on the art of. This is kind of con- condensed right here, but so this is a whiskey sour right here that has gone through a three hundred and fifty year old process called milk clarification. So this is whiskey, lemon, uh, and a red wine sugar, a wet, a red wine syrup that I made that I poured into whole milk. And for the culinary experts in the room, when the acid and the milk interact, like with cheese making, it curdles at that point in time. And what the curds begin to do is the, they begin to bond onto things like the pulp and the lemon. They began to things on like the brown tannins in the tannins in the whiskey and the red wine, and they absorb them into them. But about 85%-ish of milk is whey, a protein milk water. And when you begin to strain that cocktail out, uh, the curds get retained with all those solids, and the whey passes through. And the whey ends up creating a very rich textured, uh, thick cocktail that you can put in your refrigerator. So you can do this with a margarita, you can do it with this whiskey sour, any cocktail that has a large citrus element. And it's a super fun way once you begin to understand basic templates and process. You like gin gimlets? Great. Do it with that. You want a vodka lemon drop? Cool. Do it with that. So it's fascinating. I love waking up and learning something new every hey. time I talk to somebody. And this has been great. Cool. I, 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 you know, thank you for having me on to chat a little bit. I appreciate it. Hey.